It's a, a pivotal few days regards the future of Gareth Southgate, whatever way you look at it. Has he earned the right, do you think, Simon, to dictate his future, whatever happens against the French? Say you lose against the French and England come home. Can Gareth dictate what he does or doesn't do next? Dictate is probably not the right terminology because he's under contract. What he can do is decide for himself whether he wants to continue with the contract that he's currently being given or not. So whilst I hope that the decision is made because England have done something very commendable in this tournament. I certainly don't think it should be taken on bended knee to Gareth Southgate to uh, please stay, Gareth, please. Because I think he's, I think, you know, whilst he's done okay, I, I don't think he's a world beater. I think he's done okay with a very good group of players. What he's been very good at is creating a better culture inside the England team and utilising the talent that we've had in previous generations in a more constructive way and a productive way and has also had an inordinate amount of luck in the draws that he's got. Now, if he beats... France on Saturday, it'll be the first time that he's beaten somebody on paper that people think we can't beat. The rest of the time, he's beaten people that we think we can beat. So with that in mind, in any other walk of life, you don't necessarily get rewarded for mediocrity and begged and pleaded to stay and dictate your terms of staying. But football is <laughs> different, isn't it? So with that in mind, I think that we've got him under contract for another two years. I've always felt that was previous. I've always felt that when you're going into a World Cup tournament, surely... You're, 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 you're judged on your next contract based upon what you've been employed for in the first place, which is to be a successful tournament manager. So with all that in mind, the terminology dictate sits badly with me because I don't think he should be in a position to dictate. He's already under contract. The only thing you'll have is, would he want to continue with a backdrop of sections of the media, people like me, that have a critical eye over the reality of what he's done? Do you think you're overcritical about him? No, I think, you... I think I'm fair. I think, he's, I think he's done lots of very good things. I think he's been commendable in his ability to be able to communicate messages and impart wisdom to the media to bring them on side. Has he not shown he's a good tournament manager, though, Simon? Well, Go, until, going deep in the last until, World Cup and, and deep in the Euros. Until we beat somebody that we're not, that on paper we, we're not supposed to, what am I supposed to say? I can say, well, actually, everyone else set a low standard and managed to achieve it, so well done him for doing the same. Or I can say, well done when you've beaten somebody that no one expects us to beat. We beat everybody in the World Cup that was expected for, of us to beat, and we lost the teams that potentially that we would have, there was a 50-50 on, Croatia and Belgium. But it's football though, isn't it? I mean, Spain lost to Morocco. Are they now a terrible team, and should Luis Enrique no, get signed? And no, and no. Neither, and neither are England a terrible team, and neither should neither should it be feast or famine. Neither should he be eulogised as the saving of English football, and neither should he be the devil incarnate and worst of a manager that darkened our doors. They're somewhere in the middle. And that's the tragedy that we have in the world that we live in. It's either one or the other. I think he's a sensible, pragmatic, vanilla-type manager that will keep it. They'll never, you'll never have any um, disruption. You'll never have any uproar. You'll never have many controversies. And the controversies he's had, he's managed to steer his way through. Behaviour of players during COVID, when you had Foden and, and Mason Greenwood causing all kinds of mayhem out in, in, in Reykjavik and not ab observing the, fu the, you know, the functions and obligations they had. He's been a sensible... He's been an adult in a room. In a sometimes a childlike industry, he's been sensible, he's been pragmatic. I think he's overreached in areas. I think he's stepped into places that he didn't need to do when it talked about other things like, you know, the virtue signaling side of what okay. he thought we needed to speak to. But, but I think... Therefore, after his spell as England manager, yeah. whenever that day comes... No, absolutely not. Not to, I don't believe there'll be a top six club in this country. I was country. just going to say to you, yeah. does he re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and become a Premier League manager? Well, there's always, a, like I've said in previous discussions there's a seat for every backside do i think that seat would be at the top six or a top 10 team in the premier league highly debatable i think the functions not a top 10 no, no i don't i don't know where and who would want gareth southgate and, and what do you base level. that on because i think there's a vast difference between managing players over getting the best in the country and uh, assimilating them to play against inferior opposition beating that inferior opposition and falling short against superior opposition, I don't think that's the blueprint for how domestic management says, aha, that's the excellence I want. I think it's sensible, decent management. I don't think he should be in any way criticised for being a very pragmatic, sensible manager in all aspects of his... So you, you couldn't see him at any stage further down the line in charge of Wolves, Brighton, Leicester? Um, possibly, but I mean, I'm talking about... They were top ten. I, my, my my main conversation would be the top six because when you're talking about elite football management, you don't necessarily assume that an international manager that's managed a country of the repute of England is going to find himself managing a bottom half of the Premier League table. If you want to make an argument and expand it out beyond the top ten, yeah, maybe. Not for me. Not for me because I, I, I think he is, you know, someone that will give you an outcome that will never get you to where you want to get. And I hope I'm wrong. I actually think, I'm going to contradict myself in this sentence, I actually think we'll beat France on Saturday. 
because I listened to Carl Walker. I was so... I've not been an advocate for Carl Walker. I think that some of the things that he's done in the past have been bloody stupid. I've always admired him as a player. But I listened to that interview, and my takeaway from that interview was, boy, these players are, are in the mode. They're in the mood for this. Yeah. And the confidence and the attitude is not like similar England camps. It's not apologetic. It's not contrite. It's also not arrogant and over-assertive. It's just belief. And what's that down to? Gareth Southgate. I, I think that's down to winning. Uh, I think it's down the to... The mentality that he's instilled. But I also think if you play for teams like Man City and you win, you come into environments and you bring that with you. And that's nothing to do with England managers. That's to do with the coaches that they play for on a daily basis. And if you, yeah. can, trans if you can harness that, the England manager's job is made difficult by people that aren't very good at understanding the climate. Why would Fabio Capello come over here, look at the England team and say, I tell you what, I'm going to assert myself in an Italian way over the English players. You've got to understand the culture. You've got to talk to the language. Not, I don't mean literally the language, but the culture of the environment that you're in. Find the keys to the door, unlock that door and let everyone walk through it. Not not close the door and say, this is the room that we're in now and everyone does as I say, because yeah. you're going to find yourself in a resistance era. There have been other managers that have done it. Venables... You know, despite the fact that I have reservations about Venables off the pitch stuff, there's no doubt in '96 he was an excellent coach. Mm. I know his reputation was probably bigger than his deeds, but notwithstanding that, his achievement as a coach was not insignificant. There were other managers. Glenn Hoddle was going in the right direction before he came up with some ridiculous, wacky idea that Eileen Drury was someone that we should listen to. And those sort of things all come to the front. Okay. But I think Southgate has done a very respectable job. Why shouldn't he do a respectable job? He's been given the opportunity to manage one of arguably the best nations in football that we brag about having the best domestic league with a group of players that are, are, are an embarrassment of riches. Why shouldn't he do a bloody decent job? It's far we from a straightforward, job. though, isn't it? Well, it's, it's far from a straightforward job. It's not nothing straightforward. For good people, pe good people make things look more straightforward than they actually are. I mean, are. he's trying to do what many before him couldn't do and win a major trophy. Absolutely, and he's yet to do it. And he's had better opportunities. He's come closest. He's come close. And again, I want to qualify it, not because I'm being mean-spirited. If you draw <laughs> Panama and Colombia with their best player out, yeah. and Ukraine in tournaments, and Sweden and average sides that are in, in decline, and Germans that stink the place out, you will give yourself an opportunity. And here we come, knock, knock, knocking on the door. Italians, lose. Play against the Croatians. It's in our hands. Lose. And these are the ones, if he overcomes it against France then he writes a different script. And you're thinking he will, because I, on this occasion you're thinking, France, win. I think the players will carry him across the line. It's always the players. In the end, it's always the players. This group of players are cut from a slightly different cloth. I'm not interested in the Jack Grealishes of the world and people of that nature. I'm more interested in the starting eleven that will get you where you need to go, the Bellinghams in the world that aren't playing in English football, that are playing for different managers. Those sort of people are coming to this camp with an outlook and disposition that I've not seen in an England camp before. Yeah. That's why I think there's a chance they'll beat the French.